समस्तचनकल्याणेन्थम करुणाम नमा चन्म देव सत्गु ब्रह्म विश्वर सल्यूटेशन टू एव्री वन हू ओवरकम्स माया वी सॉ फोर पॉइंट्स यस्टडे Kastarati, kastarati Maya, who crosses, who crosses Maya. Ya sangam tyajati mahanu bhavanu sevate nirmamo bhavati. Sangam tyajati, one who gives up attachment, mahanu bhavanu sevate serves the vision of a great master. Nirmamo bhavati, one who gives up the feeling of mine, ownership. and then the last point we saw yesterday was one who spends time in solitude ya vivikta sthanam sevate one who spends time in solitude solitude is a great uh, source for us to see ourselves when we spend time in solitude we will know what we are when we others could be noticing us but we may not know what we are till we live in solitude once we start spending time in solitude 20 minutes daily like that what we discussed yesterday then we get to see by ourselves it is like a mirror let's say there is some Uh, stain on the face maybe an oil stain or something else is there and it is there but we don't no we do not notice it the moment we see a mirror and we see the stain the next moment we take a tissue or a hanky and wipe it off when it comes to my notice i change it i clean it when it doesn't come to my notice it remains there solitude will bring different things to our notice the good and the bad what we are it brings out so it is very important to be in solitude to churn out what is inside so that we can slowly clear them off so these are the four points we saw yesterday who crosses maya continuing further yo lokabandham unmoolayati lokabandham unmoolayati he who removes the bondage from its root every now and then we get tied down every now and then we find ourselves helpless every now and then we find ourselves unhappy how long can we continue like this how long to feel unhappy happy now after some time the happiness goes away sadness comes we been shuttling between these things for a very long time how long can one continue some solution should be there we should be in a position to root out this kind of limitation bondage from its very root lokabandham unmulayati take it away from its root there was a very famous strategist an economist and a political minded person 2000 years ago lived in india his name is chanakya kautalya chanakya some of you would have heard this name this person lived 2000 years ago when alexander was on the march he is the one who formed an army to resist alexander alexander came up to india and then he returned back chanakya was a dean of a university which was there in takshashila takshashila was part of india at that time now it is there in the border of pakistan and afghanistan but both were part of uh, akhand bharat long ago so we are very very happy that uh, 
the first university in the world was brought out by the Hindu community. We had the first university, Takshashila, Vallabha, Kanchi, Nalanda. These are the universities. Imagine having university 2,000 years ago. So he was a dean in Takshashila University. One day he was walking with his, uh, Chanakya was walking with his students. As they were walking, a thorn, a bush and a thorn pricked his uh, leg. He saw, he stopped, pulled the thorn out of his feet, threw it out and then went and cut that very bush which had thorns. He cut the very bush. So you cut the bush out so that the thorns are not there and he cleared the path and called one of his uh, students and said, get me some honey, sugar, please bring it. So they brought him honey and sugar. He poured it at the root of that thorny bush, which he cut, the roots are still there. He poured it there and he walked away. So his naturally his students asked him, why did you do that? He said, the root is deep. We are not able to take it out. We only cut it at the surface. It will sprout again. But when I have poured honey and milk there, the ants and other insects will come and eat the root away. This thorny plant will never grow again. This is Chanakya. And he says, if you have an enemy, you have to wipe him off like this. Don't leave anything behind. If there is an enemy, take him out completely from the root. Don't leave any traces behind. Very strategic thinker, very rare mind. Like how to pull it out from the root, all that which keeps limiting us, bondage, we should take it out from the root. Dependency, for example. Imagine the dependency we live in. How many things we depend upon? Without it, we become unhappy. And every time when I become unhappy, I understand something on which I was dependent is disturbed. As disturbed me or it got disturbed, it is not the same. So we keep getting into this unhappiness because we are dependent. We need to remove it from its root. Who crosses Maya, Narad says, one who can take it away from its root. How do we come out of bondage, dependency, etc. from its root? Knowledge is the only way. Krishna says even in the Gita, with a sword of knowledge, cut asunder all your doubts. Knowledge is a tool which we have which can guard us. Spiritual knowledge. Academic knowledge can tell us various things of the world, but doesn't train us completely. Imagine studying in a university. 20 long years you spend time in the university. Once you are out of the university, after 20 long years of education, are we in a position to face life? Do we have that strength? Or life is still difficult. 20 years we have spent time in education and we find life still difficult. That's not correct. Something wrong in education. Education is that which supports you with academic and sacred. Science and spirituality combined. Adi Shankara, one of the very leading saints, 
a scholar. In his birthplace, where he was born, in his ancestral home, we have started a university, Chinmaya University, Chinmaya Vishwavidya Peet, which was, uh, which uh, we started where Adi Shankaracharya was born. Now, Gurudev wanted this university to be a bridge between East and West. The technology of the West and the tradition of the East both should meet. A confluence, an amalgamation of uh, East and West. Tradition and technology combined. Shastra and science combined. Scriptures and science combined. Pandit and public meeting point. Look at the vision he had. A university which should support this way. So education to us should be that which makes us live life free. That which makes us live life to our full potential. If we don't live our life to our full potential, then somewhere the education has let us down. That's why today a person who comes out of the university, 20, 22 years, a small problem gets shattered. Little problem, the person is shattered. Not something very serious, but doesn't have the strength to face life. In one of the cities in India, I'm talking about an incident uh, which happened in mid-90s, almost 20 years plus. I was having my talks. End of the talk, on the last day, we had a youth meet. Different youngsters were there, and one person was coming for the talks, and it was for six, seven days. So every day he used to come in the evening, attend the talks, and I saw him also on the last day in the youth meet. As an opening question, you know, to talk to somebody, we have some set of questions. If you are in UK, you will start with the weather. That's the weather. If it's in the Far East, uh, did you sleep well? That's the starting question. If it is India, how was your dinner? Some, some starting questions you ask. So looking at this young boy, I asked him, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Just getting to know, are you studying? Are you working? You know, what are you doing? This young boy answered. That's why, I mean, it's such a powerful answer. I remember it and I keep sharing it often. He looked at me for a while and then he said, Swamiji, I am living. How are you doing? What are you doing? I am living. Oh, thank you very much for telling that. You are living? What an answer. What are you doing? I am living. I looked at him for a while. He said, he understood that it should not, be, it should not sound rude. So he came around and he said, no, 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 Swamiji. I mean it. I am not surviving. I am not existing. I am living. You understand there is a difference? Surviving and living, there is a difference. Surviving means nothing is in your control. You're just managing. Living means it is your life and you live life. Not survive, not exist, but live. We must know to live life, not just survive on this planet. For that, the right kind of knowledge is required. Only then we will overcome dependency. Otherwise, this dependency stays in us. 
Lokabandham unmulayati. Take it away from its root. Don't allow it to be there. See how many times for various things we keep depending and if it doesn't go the way I want, I am upset, I am unhappy. And that's not the way we should live. We should be well prepared and live life without such a bondage. Only source is knowledge. Brahma Vidya, scriptural knowledge. If we have it, we live life to our full potential. No disturbance at all. I was uh, in our ashram in Bombay. This is uh, early 90s, late 80s probably. Late 80s, we don't have WhatsApp. We did not have email. Google never existed. None of those were there. So communication was either by trunk call or by telegram. Telegram you send. So Gurudev changed his itinerary. Somewhere he has to go and that program was not getting done. So it has to shift to another uh, center to do. So he called somebody and he said, hey, send this uh, telegram today because they should not, uh, you should give them news early so that they don't make arrangements and other center works. So a telegram has to be sent. You understand telegram? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you find one, it is in archives today. Okay. Telegram. Because uh, young people will not understand what that means. Because when they, born, when they were born, telegram was outdated already. Okay. Huh. So he said, send a telegram. Now, afternoon, he met the same person to whom he said, hey, you send this telegram. Afternoon, morning, he must have told them. Afternoon, he met him. So naturally, when you give some work to somebody and then you ask again, is the work over? If that person has not reported, so you will ask, is the work done? Did you send the telegram? So naturally, Gurudev asked him, did you send the telegram? Now that person, he said, don't worry, Swamiji, it will be done. I will get it done. Don't worry, it will be done. Gurudev looked at him for a while. He said, come here. Come here, come here. So <laughs> the guy came, <laughs> stood in front of Swamiji. And he, Gurudev was looking at him for a while. And the place was getting quite still, you know. Swamiji is not talking, just looking at him. And he also did not know now what happened. He was looking. And there was a kind of a stillness in the atmosphere. Then he said, what did you say? Don't worry, it'll be done. Don't worry, it'll be done. Have you seen me worried? Do you understand that question? Have you seen me worried? How many of us can say that? Have you seen me worried? Can we ask somebody? They'll give us a list of times. I have seen you worried yesterday. I've seen you worried tomorrow. I mean, it'll go on, you know, like, I've seen you worried all life. Whenever I see you, I see you worried. How many of us can say, have you seen me worried? This is the master. And he didn't know to whom he was talking. If he was talking to one of us, it is fine. Don't worry, it'll be done. To Gurudev, don't worry, it'll be done. Come here, man. Come here. Have you seen me worried? With what authority? Huh? That question was like with absolute, because he knew it. When was I worried? Have you seen me worried? Now, what will that guy say? No, no, Swamiji, we have never seen you worried. Have you seen me worried? Oh, that is a question. 
we should get this out of our way. We also should say, worry is my past no more. It was there at some point of time. I have grown over it. The only thing which can take us through is right knowledge. Brahma Vidya. Holding on to it, understanding it, studying it, will make us grow over dependency. So, he says, your loka bandham unmulayati. That is point number five. Remove the bondage from its root. Point six. Nistrai gunyo bhavati. Nistrai gunyo bhavati. The Hindu rishis, the achievement, some of things which they have made, the modern scientists, psychiatrists are all stunned of certain observations they have made. Thousands of years ago, without any this kind of technology, when you go to a Hindu temple, you have Navagraha, the nine planets kept in a row, And in the center is sun. And then each of the graha has a particular kind of a cloth tied. Mars, red cloth. Mangal, kucha, red cloth. Jupiter, yellow. When, since when are we practicing this? And those are the colors of the planet. Today we know with the satellites flying across, telescopes, etc. We know Mars appears red in color. Jupiter appears blue in color. I mean, yellow in color. The Rishis made these observations thousands of years ago. Yajnavalkya, one of the Rishis of the Vedas, knew the distance between the earth and the sun. Can you imagine the knowledge? The distance between the earth and the sun. 108 suns if you keep, that is the distance between the earth and the sun. The diameter of the sun can accommodate 108 earths. That is the size of the sun. Today the science has agreed all this. And Yajnavalkya said this what? 5000 years before. BCE. 5,000 years before the common era, Yajnavalkya has said. So the observations of the rishis are fascinating. Whether it is external world or subjective. Imagine the number of thoughts which run in our mind every day. People like Wayne Dyer, he says... There are around uh, 60,000 thoughts run in our mind every day. Can you imagine? 60,000 thoughts run in our mind every day. And one of that thought for today is who crosses Maya? You understand? 60,000 thoughts continuously passing through our mind every day. Imagine 60,000 thoughts running in my mind, 60,000 thoughts running in your mind, the population and the thoughts running in every human being. All these thoughts have been classified. What should we imagine the mind and the thoughts which we have? Variety of thoughts. Each one is thinking different. But the entire thoughts which we have Thoughts have been classified and they have classified thoughts into three levels. Tamasic thought, Rajasic thought, Sattvic thought. This is called three gunas. Any thought in our mind would fall into these three categories. Thoughts born out of confusion, ignorance. From there the thoughts come. Confusion, ignorance. 
Thomas. Thoughts born out of restlessness, anxiety, stress, and not sure whether I'll get it or not. Thoughts born out of that, Rajoguna. Thoughts born out of clarity, absolute knowledge, pleasant mind, calm. Born out of clarity, born out of restlessness, born out of confusion. All our thoughts fall into these categories. Either of them, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. This is called three gunas. We are bound by these three gunas. Everyone. Every human being is bound by three, these three gunas. For some people, Tamas could be larger, more. Rajas could be less. Sattva could be absolutely minimum. For some people, Rajoguna can be absolutely, I mean, could be more dominant. Tamas could be okay and Sattva can be very less. For some few people, quite rare, Sattva Guna would be predominant. Rajoguna, Tamoguna would be less. All our thoughts are in these three categories. Narad says, Nistraigunyo Bhava. Go beyond three gunas. Go beyond three gunas. You want to cross Maya, go beyond three gunas. In the most easiest way to say that is, go beyond your thought. Go beyond your thought. Where is this Lord we are searching for? All of us are searching for Lord. Where is he? Is he in a temple? Is he far beyond somewhere in the clouds, in the sky, or in a Tirtha Kshetra, Kailas, Mansarovar. Where is this Lord? The Lord is right behind your thought. Where is that Lord? He is right behind our thought. Thoughts are running like a curtain. When you watch a movie, you see the motion images. What is that you see? Of picture after picture, image after image, running in a particular speed, you see the motion, a movement. But it is all still images. In one particular speed it runs, therefore we are able to see it as a motion, as moving. Similarly, since the thoughts are running so fast, it has become a screen, a thought curtain that side of the thought curtain is the Lord there can't be anyone more closer to us than the Lord if I can get the thought curtain down we would experience God if we can manage to bring the thought curtain down God divine would be our experience that is why emphasis is given on meditation in meditation, we are trying to bring this thought curtain down. Slow it down, slow it down. When thoughts stop, Lord is our experience. See, it is like this. When thoughts are there, means mind is active. With mind, we see the world. Okay, when thoughts are not there, mind is still, what appeared as world, you will see it as God. When there are no thoughts, it is not the world, it was appearing as the world, it appears now as God. When thoughts come, God disappears, world appears. When thoughts disappear, world disappears, God appears. What you see as world, it is when we are seeing it with our thoughts. When there are no thoughts, the world will look like God. That is why those rishis, mahatmas who have silenced their mind, 
they say God is everywhere because whatever they see, they see only God. Mind is not there. With the mind, world we experience. When mind is silenced, God we experience. The same world which we were seeing as world now looks like God when mind is silent. When mind is active, God which was there disappears and world appears. So as long as these thoughts are there, we will see the world this way. Nistraigunyo Baba, go beyond thought. Go beyond gunas. How do I do this? How do I go beyond my own thoughts? I saw two movies on quantum physics. Those who are interested, you can download them and watch. It's a very interesting movie. First one is called, What the Bleep Do You Know? First, what the bleep do you know? It's on quantum physics. Second one, Down the Rabbit Hole. Name of the movies, Down the Rabbit Hole. Alice tumbling down the rabbit hole and found a wonderland down the rabbit hole is part two of this movie. Both are movies based on a kind of a movie and documentary combined that is docudrama you can call it. There is a storyline but more of a documentary presentation. It's a docudrama but very fascinating movies. And the subject is quantum physics. Quantum physics is the science which is getting closer to Vedanta. The subject of Vedanta, it is the quantum physics which is getting closer. One of the quantum physicists, a scientist, says in the final analysis, this is a statement, in the final analysis, Observer is the truth. In the final analysis, the last level if you go, you have made the final analysis, observer is the truth. Meaning, when you break an atom, quark, you go further into quark, God particle today, go beyond that, he says, observer. The last frontier when you break, finally you come, is the observer. That is the, that is the final. In the final analysis, observer is the last point. It's the truth. Beyond observer, there is nothing. This is a very powerful finding in quantum physics, which in Vedanta, we say very commonly, Sakshi. Remain a Sakshi, a witness, observer. Observer is the final truth. In quantum physics, Vedant says Sakshi. Now, how do I go beyond the three gunas? Be Sakshi, be an observer. Do not get into the theme of the thought. Be an observer of the thought. If we can do this, we will go beyond the three gunas. Whenever, particularly when you are sitting in meditation, attempting to quieten your mind, sitting and trying to contemplate, at that time a thought will come. When a thought comes, do not get into the theme of the thought. Watch the thought, allow it to pass. A thought comes and the thought passes away is fine. When a thought comes, we get into the theme of the thought, then we are lost. One getting into the theme of the thought means thoughts are going to multiply. When we stop there and allow it to pass, then we stay as an observer.
you are doing seat in the seat of meditation sri krishna sri krishna sri krishna chanting the name of the lord sri krishna sri krishna sri krishna now another thought comes as you are doing japa sri krishna sri krishna sri krishna another thought comes sri krishna sweets sri krishna sweets very famous in tamil nadu okay so now that thought comes pass it don't go into the theme pass it thought came move don't go into the theme you know what happens when a thought comes we go into the theme sri krishna sweets are very very good every diwali this so and so would present this diwali she did not give it to me now you are from meditation where have you gone a thought has come we went into the theme of the thought and we are dragged away don't go into the theme stay alert and allow the thought to pass that is called being an observer sakshi witness in the final analysis observer is the absolute truth quantum physics imagine after a long journey they have arrived upon this understanding what a long journey physics from physics to astrophysics metaphysics metaphysics it evolved to quantum physics at quantum physics they have made this statement in the final analysis observer is the absolute truth which is something almost every third verse in vedant speaks be an observer do not get into the theme of the thought thought comes allow it to pass don't get into it if we can do that we go beyond gunas nistray gunyo bhavati go beyond these three gunas this is the way we go beyond the three gunas practice being a witness practice being an observer observer means when a thought comes you are letting the thought pass whenever you are sitting in meditation it's not at all other times when you sit in meditation thought comes allow it to pass do not get into the theme of the thought then we can go beyond gunas nistray gunyo bhavati yoga kshemam tyajati yoga kshemam all of us get stressed in life for two factors these are the two sources which stress us in life everybody things which i want to acquire i have not got this i want to get this lot of stress till you get it to acquire we have lot of stress and we have a list of things which we want to acquire whole list this i want this i want this i want till i get it i am not sure there's a great great stress in the mind to acquire another stress we have with lot of effort we have acquired things with great effort we have acquired things to preserve them but so much of effort i have acquired this if i don't preserve it i get stressed so acquiring and preserving is the stress factor we have this i don't have this is to be done if i do this i will get this i need to acquire it therefore i am putting my effort uncertainty about it i get stressed acquiring and with a lot of effort once we have acquired somehow preserve it somebody can take it away i may lose it 
somehow preserve it. Acquiring and preserving is the main occupation of our mind. Anybody. What is your occupation? I need to acquire this. And this water, what is already acquired, I need to preserve. Acquiring is called yoga here. Yoga kshemam. Yoga to join. To join with things I don't have. Acquire. Kshema, preserve. Narad says, these two you give up. Don't worry. The Lord will take care. If you turn your mind towards God, these two things he will take care. You don't have to worry about it. It is a promise the Lord gives. In the chapter 9 of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says clearly, Ananyas chintayantomam e janaha pariupasate tesham nityabhi yuktanam yoga kshemam vahamyam. What you need to acquire will be given, provided to you. What you need to preserve will be done. To whom? Ananyas chintayantomam. He whose mind is turned towards God. In short, if we make God as our priority, today God is not our priority. Self-realization is not our priority. We have hundreds of things plus self-realization. Isn't it? This I want, that I want, that. I have a list of things and also God. If God becomes our priority, God I want. Moksha is what I want. Nirvana is what I want to experience. Once we make that as our priority, whatever needs to be provided, God will provide. Whatever needs to be preserved, he said he will preserve. You do not worry about it. Make your goal, God. Okay. A little understanding can help us do this easily. Today, when you have to be introduced, when you have to tell something about you, how would you introduce yourself? Maybe by the name, maybe by your qualification, maybe by your status in the society, what do you state? This is how we introduce. I am so and so. I am doing this. I am doing that. This is where I come from. I belong to this country. I practice this religion. These are the things we say. But if you can shift this a bit, little adjustment, it will make great difference in life. Who are you? I am a seeker. I am a devotee first. I am a devotee who is a mother. I am a devotee who is a father. I am a devotee who is an husband. Devotee who is a wife. Devotee first, then the rest. I am a devotee. I am a seeker. I am seeking truth. I am a seeker. Seek her who is a husband or a wife or brother or sister, different roles. But first, you are a seeker. I am a mother, sister, wife, and a seeker. No. There's a lot of difference in it. But if you are a seeker and a mother, how would a seeker who is a mother respond to the world? You are a devotee of the Lord. How would you respond to the world? Martin Luther King.
He was sitting very sad, completely sad, morose. His wife came a couple of times in front of him, but he was lost in sadness. So she said, this man has to be taught something. Went, changed her costume. She wore a dress which she wears for the funeral. Funeral dress. She came and stood in front of him. Suddenly he noticed her. Why are you wearing this? Who passed away? That lady looks at him and says, God. Who passed away? God. Now imagine an answer like that. Who died? God died. What an answer. <laughs> Who died? God died. So he naturally he jumped out of his seat and said, What do you mean? How dare you speak something like that? He said, Looking at your face, that's what I thought. You look so disturbed, so worried. God died? You have faith? What is your faith? Think. If you are a devotee and a mother, or a devotee and a father, how would you respond to the world? A mother who is also a devotee is different. A devotee who is a mother is completely different. So first identity should be I am a seeker or I am a devotee. The rest comes after that. As a seeker, as a devotee, respond to the world. The difference is so much. It is such a beautiful way of living. So when you do this, that means your priority has shifted. Your priority is or your identity is you are a seeker first. Then, to such a person who has made the shift in identification, for such a person, the Lord says, whatever you need to acquire, you will acquire. Whatever you need to preserve, you will preserve. That will be preserved. It is my responsibility. You don't stress about it. Whoever has made the shift in identity, the Lord takes care. Swami Tapavan Maharaj was traveling in Himalayas. He was, he is an avid traveler, wanderings in the Himalayas, moving. One night, uh, the next village which he has to go was far away and he could not get there. He found a dilapidated temple on the highway. So he went into the temple, no electricity, nothing in 30s. So he found a corner and he stayed there in the temple quietly, saying, this is where I have to spend the night. It's a dilapidated temple, small temple sitting there. After some time, three thieves came there, highway robbers, three of them came. So they came. And it is dark, you don't even see anybody. They came and uh, settled down in the other corner of the temple. When the darkness, the eyes got used to the darkness, they found there's another man sitting there. So the three thieves came straight to Tapon Maharaj, saying, why are you sitting here? He said, I'm a sadhu wandering. What do you have in your bag? They pulled the bag from Tapon Maharaj. Opened and saw what is there in that bag. One set of clothes, ochre, saffron, and one book, Bhagavad Gita. Now if you loot uh, Swami Tapon Maharaj, only possibility, moksha. <laughs> Nothing else. What can, what can you get there? You pull a bag, nothing, one set of clothes, orange that too, and one book, Gita. They left it back, saying, what is the use of him? And they went, went back to their corner, sat down there, and they took food to eat. 
And one of those guys said, uh, we'll ask him if he ate something. So they come to Swami Tapon Maharaj, did you eat anything? He said, no. You want some food? We'll give. And they gave him little food to eat. In the middle of the night, the next village is far away. He's sitting there quietly in the temple. Food reached in. You know how Swami Tapon Maharaj responded? He looks at three of them and tells, Oh Lord, do you have to take this form to come and feed me? Do you have to take this form to feed me? Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham. What needs to come to you will come. That is his responsibility. What needs, what you need, it will reach. What needs to be preserved will be preserved if our mind is with him. And look at Tapan Maharaj's response. Oh Lord, you have to come in this form to feed me. Yoga Kshemam. We should not stress about it. What needs will come, what needs to be preserved will be preserved. The Lord will take care of it. Yoga Kshemam Tyajati. Who crosses Maya? He who gives up Yoga Kshemam. First point, one who gives up attachment, Sangam Tejati. Second point, one who serves a great master, Mahanu Bhavanu Sevate. Third point, Nirmamo Bhavati, one who gives up ownership. Fourth point, one who spends time in solitude. Point five, Point five, loka bandham unmulayati, remove bondage from its root. Overcome that with knowledge. That will help you to get out of bondage. Point six, nistraigunyo bhavati, stay as an observer. Watch the flow of thoughts. Do not get into the theme of the thoughts. Nistraigunyo bhavati. Seventh point, yoga kshemam thyajati. Do not stress on acquiring and preserving. The Lord will take care of it. You don't worry about it. You just drop it. You shift your identity. First become a devotee or a seeker. The rest will follow. Having seen this much, we go into the next sutra, sutra 48. Ya karma phalam tyajati karmani sanyasyati tato nirdvandvo bhavati. Ya karma phalam tyajati. A result of an action is called karma phala. I do something, the consequence of my action is the fruit of that action, which is called karma phala. Action happens and phala comes later. Karma phala. So today what I have to do, the reward of it, I will get later. The consequence of my action. The karma phala follows the action. Some karmas are instant. You get it immediately. Some are at a later stage. So karma phala, thyajati, means... Give up attachment to the fruit of action. Give up attachment to it. Fruit of action we cannot give. Give up. Because it will come to us. What I do, I will get it back. The consequence of my action, I, will, I have to face it. It will come to me. We may dodge the world around. We may dodge the judiciary. We may dodge all that. You can't dodge law of karma. That is done by Ishwara. Nobody can dodge law of karma. What action I do, the result of it will come to me. Cosmic intelligence takes care of it. The creation is designed that way. So we can't dodge law of karma. We have to accept. 
so whatever i do i will get the result for it the result may be as i like it may be as i may be not what i like it may come so whatever comes to us it can be the way i want it or it may not be the way i want it but it will come so here the rishi says do not get attached to the fruit of your action now let us look at it quickly action is in the present fruit is in the future are you sure of the future are we sure of the future can we give guarantee how it is going to be tomorrow what guarantee do we have future is uncertain never invest your happiness on uncertainties never invest in uncertainties what is certain this moment is certain action is certain result is uncertain we may be there to get the result we may not be there the result may come the way in which i want it may not come the way in which i want because so many factors are involved my effort my karma all put together so the result belongs to the future and future is in the distant i mean future is uncertain so do not invest happiness in uncertainty invest happiness in what is certain this moment is certain be happy now understood this moment is certain we must be happy now don't assume ha ah, very nice point narada bhakti sutra one day in the future i will practice no some day in the future i'll be happy no now be happy in the moment what is certain be happy in it that is why it is said enjoy the action when you are doing something cherish it let the result be what it has to be karma phalam tyajati do not be attached to the fruit of action give up that attachment to the fruit of action whatever comes let it come you enjoy the action gurudev says the joy is in the race run not in the trophy won the joy is in running the race in running the race they you're certain result i am not certain enjoy the race the joy is in the race run not in the trophy won karma phalam tyajati then he goes one step further karmani sanyasyati the very next line he says first he said give up attachment to the fruit of action and now he says karmani sanyasyati drop action itself why only fruit give up action itself activity itself you drop i'll tell you there are two beautiful geetas we have bhagavad geeta dialogue between krishna and arjuna and vyasa has written ramayan called adhyatma ramayan in that there is a beautiful portion called ram geeta there are two ram geetas one is in tulsi ramayan i am not talking about it i am talking about ram geeta written by veda vyasa so one is bhagavad geeta dialogue between krishna and arjuna ram geeta dialogue between ram and lakshman arjuna to arjuna krishna said go out in the world act in the world be detached to the fruit this is the way for your life so arjuna wanted to run away from action krishna said no no you can't run away from action you stay here and act you stay here and work why work will purify arjuna 
by performing work and dedicating it to the Lord, karma yoga, selfless work will purify the person performing. Arjuna needs purification. Therefore, Krishna's advice is commit to action, detach to the fruit of action. Lakshmana asks few questions. Ram Gita now. Ram looks after 14 long years of serving Ram in the forest selflessly. And when they return back to the palace, Lakshman still serves him. After considerable amount of service, Lakshman puts this question to Ram. Guide me into the truth. Ram tells Lakshman, Ram Gita, not karma phala, drop action itself. Now you sit quietly. Don't have to take up two activities. Sit quietly, you will know the truth. The student is completely different. Student has served, purified himself. He can now sit quietly. Karmani sanyasyati. First, only drop the result of an action. Be selfless and purify. Then we will reach a point where even the activity has to be dropped. Like Ramana Maharishi dropped and sat quietly. After purification, don't do it before. Then the chance of purification is not there. So karmani sanyasyati. Drop even actions. Mainly selfish actions. Drop it. Selfishness is the distance between you and God. Selfishness. Our selfishness is the distance between us and God. What? How far is God from you? How selfish you are. No selfishness. God is closest. No selfishness at all. You are one with God. The distance between us and the Lord, individual, person to person, the distance is because of the, the distance is how selfish we are, how much selfish we are. So if we can drop selfish actions, it will take us forward, purifying. And then drop the action also, reduce it, sit quietly. Karmani sanyasyati. One who gives up selfish action, he gets to reach the Lord. Tato nirdvandvo bhavati. Then he says the next point. This way one should go beyond pairs of opposite. Likes, dislikes. Nirdvandvo bhavati. I get something today. I get too excited about it. Or I'm denied something. I get depressed about it. Do not swing between these opposites. Things will come. Today can be wonderful, tomorrow can be miserable, doesn't matter. Everything what you want came today and nothing what you wanted has come tomorrow. Don't get shuttled. Joy, sorrow will come and we are not new to joy, sorrow. Are we strangers or what? To joy and sorrow. Huh? How much we have experienced them? From childhood till now. And which is that sorrow which stayed with you forever? Moved out. No, no, it is there. The intensity has reduced, isn't it? Which is the joy which stayed with you forever? They also came and went. Joy comes and goes. Sorrow comes and goes. We should not be caught into these. Allow them to come and go. Don't get carried away by them. Nirdvandvo bhavati. Become free from the pairs of opposites. And then he says here, In Sutra 49, he says, Yo Vedanapi Sanyasyati Kevalam Avichinnam Anuragam Labate. He who renounces, point number 11, he who renounces the Vedas, Vedanapi Sanyasyati, one who gives up Vedas. Swamiji, this should have been the first point the day before yesterday. I wouldn't have come for two days. On the third day before closing, you are telling this. Vedanapi Sanyasati, give up Vedas, you will cross Maya. 
that is what i have been doing all throughout and unnecessarily you are forcing the study into me and then say drop it please think i want all of you to think the sincerity of this book the sincerity of our rishis the sincerity of the vedas the vedas are telling you after a point you don't need them drop it holding on to it after a point can be a bondage when you cross the river using a boat you cross now drop the boat get down move out of the boat can't carry the boat further you have crossed the river the boat has served its purpose drop the boat the form is required at one point of time it serves you and now you have matured enough to understand formless drop the form don't hold on to it ganesh chaturthi how do we celebrate for 10 days you worship ganesha you keep the form you do everything after 10 days take the form go to a well lake river somewhere immerse it go beyond the form don't hold on to the form form is needed to quieten your mind it has served now drop it and go vedas are needed to quieten our mind it has served drop it and move on veda itself is telling that where on earth you find a scripture like this look at the depth and the sincerity the book says beyond a point if you hold on to the book you could be lost in the book shabd jal maharanya maharanya forest maha great forest play of words is a great forest one could be lost and there are people isn't it book after book book after book book after book you want to read why i feel good about it nice addicted to that kind can be a block and gurudev says it even more beautiful he says it more sweeter i am only a pointer not the pointed gurudev says that i am only a pointer now when there is a pointer showing something where there is a bird watch the pointer is pointing towards the bird you watch the pointer move in the direction of the pointer leave the pointer behind shift your attention that side possibilities are there we will see the bird correct no 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 i can't give up this pointer i am looking at the pointer you will see the bird you can't see the bird right to see the bird you must move in the direction of the pointer and drop the pointer vedas give you a direction and tells now drop move forward vedan api sanyasyati more easy way to understand when you go back home today you want to sleep you have this thought i want to sleep i want to sleep that's why you prepare the bed and everything you want to sleep and this thought is not going out of you i want to sleep i want to sleep that thought is not going will you sleep as long as that thought is there can you sleep i want to sleep what do you want to i want to sleep not letting go that thought holding on to the thought i want to sleep you're still awake you let that thought also go you have not slept still before sleeping you let that thought also go i want to sleep is also dropped then the sleep sucks you in similarly the books and the knowledge are needed to a point 
having reached there we should leave it and go forward form is needed for a point after coming to the point drop the form move forward formless pointer and the pointed similarly vedas are needed we have great reverence we keep them it is needed to a point you drop it you don't need it further you drop it but please remember don't go around telling others i have dropped vedas i have dropped vedas don't tell that because your child who is following you your next generation who is following you are not even ready to drop it and they'll drop it if you make that claim it is a subjective understand it has served you be silent about it don't go around telling because others need that you don't need the form but someone else in your family needs that form they have to grow to the point you have grown that's why ganesh chaturthi is the best way to celebrate next year we bring back the form isn't it this year we went drop the form immersed it all over but next year we bring it back why someone else in the family needs it get it back for them so vedan api sanyasyati one who gives up vedas and then the last point he says he who gains i mean you know like who has this unbroken devotion to the lord make the lord your priority that's the only worthy thing in life every other thing is your duty do that but god is your priority seeking god perform duty don't think your family is your priority family is your duty god is your priority every other thing which we do is our duty which we need to do through that duty we may reach god so the last point here is it's your priority keep the lord as your priority and everything else is a performance of duty so he says um, yo vedana api sanyasiti kevalam avichinnam anuragam labate and then he concludes sa tarati sa tarati sa lokam starayati sutra 50 he crosses who he who has these 12 points sangam tyajati mahanubhava anusevate nirmamo bhavati one after another up to 12 points whoever has cultivated these 12 points he crosses maya not only he crosses maya he helps others cross maya how beautiful not only you go beyond you guide others to go beyond you cross and you help others to cross sa tarati sa tarati sa lokam starayati he crosses he crosses verily he helps others cross you get awakened and wake up others you get awakened and just don't stop there on getting awakened help others to wake up sa tarati sa tarati sa lokam starayati with that we conclude our series of talks it was nice talking to all of you thank you very much om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om yes please